Hey everybody, this is Mike Schaup with the Software Freedom School again. This video is my second video about my favorite open source software, Nextcloud. The first video was an introduction to Nextcloud and why I generally think it's pretty awesome. This video is going to be the technical one. I'm going to walk you through how to install Nextcloud on a server and how to get your desktop client set up for it. In this video, we're going to use a digital ocean droplet, but you can really use whatever compute you have available to you. If you want to follow along with me on DigitalOcean, I recommend you watch my video on how to take basic steps to secure a DigitalOcean droplet. I'll put a link to that video in the description of this video. For those of you in the Denver area, I also teach this class with the Software Freedom School every November, so if you're interested and want to know more, please check out the Software Freedom School's website at sofree.us and see what we've got going on. Now. Let's get started. I'm going to pull open the DigitalOcean console here. We can see that I've already got my droplet built. It's just a basic one CPU, one gigabyte of memory droplet, small amount of disk space, and it's running Ubuntu 18.04. Now, you can use other distributions here, but I'm going to be walking through this on Ubuntu, and the steps may be slightly different if you use, say, CentOS. So the last thing you need to make sure is that you have a DNS name that resolves to the public IP address of your next cloud server. In DigitalOcean, this right here is my public IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and copy it and go to the networking tab. I'm using DigitalOcean to manage DNS for my domain shoutlabs.xyz. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create an A record. We'll call it next cloud. And oh, I didn't even need to copy the IP address because DigitalOcean looks like they automatically show you droplets in your account. So I can just click Next Cloud and Create Record. Um, if you're familiar at all with DNS, you know this this can take a while to actually start working. What you can do to take a look is open up a terminal and. If you're on Windows, open up like command prompt. And there's a few commands you can use in Linux. I can type dig nextcloud.shoplabs.xyz. And we can see it's already resolving, which is great. Uh, another one in Windows, for example, you could do ns lookup and then the um, DNS name. And you could see it's it's responding Another one that might work on your system is host. And these all are functionally equivalent. They'll just tell you what the IP address is of the DNS name. So now let's go ahead and SSH into the server. Yes, this is the first time I've connected to it. So it's asking me, do I trust the server? I have to type in a password to unlock my SSH key. And now I'm on my server. So we're going to go ahead and use what's called snaps. Nextcloud publishes a snap that makes installing Nextcloud server a, well, a snap, right? So an Ubuntu server snaps already installed. I can just type sudo snap install Nextcloud and hit enter. Put in my password to become root. And it's going to go ahead, download all the prerequisites and get Nextcloud up and running. So installing Nextcloud was taken a few minutes, so I paused the recording and have come back to it. I can show you that the snap did successfully install by typing the command sudo snap list. We can see that I've got the core snap. This is always installed. And then the next cloud snap. You can also see that it's installed version 17.0.5. The next cloud snap does lag behind the main version by a little bit. So I can tell you right now that the latest version is 18.0.4. It's a small trade off you make for using a snap and making it really easy to install next cloud. The next step we need to do is allow HTTP and HTTPS through the firewall. That'll allow your web browser to actually connect to it. 
On Ubuntu, we use the command UFW. So we can do that with sudo UFW allow HTTP. And then we can do the same thing with sudo UFW allow HTTPS. HTTP allows port 80 and HTTPS allows port 443. So now that we're allowing traffic through to Nextcloud, the next step is we want to make sure it's encrypted. Nextcloud Snap comes bundled with Let's Encrypt, which allows you to generate short-lived free SSL certificates. It's also got the logic built into it to automatically renew your certificate before it expires. So to enable that, we just type sudo nextcloud.enable dash HTTPS space let's dash encrypt. Now it's gonna give you some information about how this works. First, it's telling you, you have to agree to the Let's Encrypt subscriber agreement, and it gives you the link to it. Uh, you must have a domain name for which you want the certificate pointing at the external IP address. That's why in DigitalOcean, I created the nextcloud.shoutlabs.xyz address, and then you also need ports 80 and 443 on the external IP address working. So we've set all that up. Have we met the requirements? Yes, we have. An email address, well, I'll just put in mine. This is where they're going to send you notices such as the domain's expiring and hasn't been renewed, or if you need to recover a private key. And then we'll put in the domain name, which is nextcloud.shoplabs.xyz. It's going to go out and attempt to obtain the certificate. This should happen automatically as long as everything is set up. Okay, it's done, it restarted Apache. So now we should be able to go to our web browser and pull up Nextcloud. We'll open a new tab here and go to nextcloud.shoplabs.xyz. You can see I've already been playing around with it, so it's already in my history. And ta-da, now do this as quick as you can because there's no admin account and somebody nefarious could come through here and just create their own admin account. So I'm gonna create mine. I'm gonna call it Mike. And we're gonna give it a nice and secure password. That was not secure enough. A nice and secure password. There we go. Now it's gonna go through and do some like finalization and make sure everything's all set up. On a small machine like the one I've picked, this can take a while. So with some magic, I've fast forwarded a few minutes and we can see that my next cloud server is already set up and ready for me to go. You get this nice little splash screen, it's a little walkthrough. You can go ahead and click through it. It'll tell you all about next cloud. I'm gonna close it here. If you watched my previous video, you saw these same sample files. Again, these get installed for every user that's created on your system. But this tells us that Nextcloud is ready to go. We can go ahead and start using it. We can click the cog up here and go to settings. And then over here to overview. This section only administrators of Nextcloud will see. And the last thing I wanted to show you was that all of our security and setup warnings don't exist. Um, because we use the snap, Nextcloud automatically configured it in a secure way and a way that will be mostly performant for what you need to do. There's one more step before we can really get going. We need to set up the desktop client. Now, I've already installed the desktop client on this machine. But if you haven't, you can go to nextcloud.com, go up here to get nextcloud, and then you wanna choose a desktop and mobile app. Select whatever your desktop is, or you can even go to mobile and get it on your phone's app store, and then follow the instructions from there. Okay, as I've mentioned, I've already got the Nextcloud client installed on my machine. So let's just go ahead and open that. And the first time you open it, it's gonna ask you, do you wanna register with a provider or do you wanna log in? Well, we've already got our own server set up, so we just wanna log in. It's gonna ask you the server address. In this case, that's that DNS name you've created. In my case, shoplabs. Hmm, whoop, that's not it. 
<laughs> nextcloud.shoplabs.xyz. Hit next. Have to log into it. So that's that username and secure password you created when you first opened up Nextcloud. Allow that access through. And then you get one final screen before it starts downloading all your files, some options on how to sync. The default is to sync everything and then to ask you confirmation for some other stuff. You could also sync by folder if you wanted to. I'm just gonna choose the default and click connect. It didn't take very long, but it's got all my files downloaded. So let's go ahead and open up the file manager and go into the next cloud folder. And you can see there's all those sample files. So I'm just going to go ahead and open up a text editor and type something in the file and save it. Go ahead and save it to the next cloud folder. I'll call it test.txt. We can see the files in my Nextcloud folder on my computer. Let's go back to the Nextcloud client. If we go to activity, we can see that it picked it up real fast and has already synchronized it. And if we go back to our client and go to the files folder, we can see it's recently edited and we can open it up and look at it. It's already on your server. Now, isn't that just magic? There's just a couple things I'd like to talk about to help you manage your new Nextcloud server. If you go to github.com slash nextcloud slash nextcloud dash snap, the readme here will give you some common things that you may want to deal with. So for example, you could change the ports that it runs on. We didn't need to do that here. Um, you know, so for example, you might want to adjust the memory limit. The default is 128 megabytes. Uh, and it tells you here, if you notice images not getting previews or other errors, you could use the snap command to increase the PHP memory limit. Another thing would be maybe you want to change the interval that the cron job runs in. Um, and then it tells you some more things about interacting with the utilities that are included. So for example, the OCC command, this command allows you to do some things to Nextcloud itself, like enable maintenance mode, repair database tables, that kind of thing. You can, it even has the MySQL client built into it. And these commands, you could export all of your data and you could even import your data. So this command, maybe you want to set up a cron job to back up all of your data periodically, hint, hint. And the last thing you want to know where all of your files are, well, they're here on the server in Varsnap Next Cloud Current. So that's all I really wanted to show you, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you really enjoy your new Next Cloud server. Um, I will do my best to make sure there's links to any important documents that you might need in the description of this video. If you have any problems, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments of this video, and I will do my best to see if I can help you. Thanks.